Here we're going to be trying to find the greatest common factor. And what that means is what is the largest number that can multiply into other given numbers? In order to do this, we have two things to consider. First off, regular numbers. Yes, before this was a hashtag, it meant number. Second is letters or variables. Let's start with numbers. All right, when dealing with whole numbers or non-variables, there's kind of two ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is the quick way. In this way, you basically look into your brain and say, what is the greatest common factor? First, if we had 3 and 6, well, I could look into my head and say that I know 3 goes into 3, and 3 also goes into 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So, in this case, my greatest common factor is 3. Over here, 25 and 10, well, I see that 5 can go into both of those. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10. I know that 5 is my greatest common factor for these guys over here. For our next one, we have 42 and 28. Okay, I'm looking into my brain and I can't find anything. I don't know. I don't know what the greatest common factor of these is right off the bat. So, in this case, the second case, kind of the long way, what you wanna do is split these guys up and you're gonna create an individual factor tree for each of these. So, I could break down 42. Well, 42 is gonna be 6 times 7, 6 can be broken down to 2 and 3, and then I'm taking these prime numbers here, and I'm going to compare those to the prime factors of 28. So if I break down 28, I can get, well, 2 and 14. 14 can do be 7 times uh, 2, and here are my prime numbers of 28. So what we're going to do here is we're going to compare these to one another, and see what lines up. Well, I see that these have a two in common, so I'm gonna store that two down here. They also have a seven in common, so I'm gonna multiply that times my two. We've got a three left over and a two left over, but since those aren't in common, since I can't pair those up, that's not gonna be a part of my greatest common factor. Now I have two times seven, that's gonna give me 14, and this is gonna be my greatest common factor of these numbers. And now when I look into my brain, that makes sense. If 14 can go into both of these, that's probably gonna be the biggest thing. So first, look into your brain. That's gonna be the fastest way possible. If you can just look at it and know what the greatest common factor is, go ahead and go with that. If not, make a factor tree and then multiply all your common factors together, just like we did in that last example. Next, finding the GCF greatest common factor of variables. This is kind of interesting. First, let's take x and x cubed. Well, x is the same as x. We got that. x cubed would be x times x times x. The greatest amount of x's that they have in common is just one of these. So your greatest common factor of x and x cubed is just going to be x. Let's look at this y to the fifth and y squared. y to the fifth is y times y times y times y times y. y squared is y times y. The greatest number of y's that they have in common would be two. They each have two y's in common. So this greatest common factor is going to be y squared. And you may be able to see a pattern with the GCF of variables. You're always gonna be taking the variable with the lowest exponent because that's the greatest amount that they're both gonna have in common. Let's try a couple with numbers and variables together. First, I'm gonna take the 12 and the eight. What is the greatest common factor of 12 and eight? Well, I can look in my brain for this one, and the greatest common between 12 and eight is actually going to be four. So four is my greatest common factor, four times three is 12, four times two is eight. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna take my x cubed and my x squared. The most x's that they are gonna have in common is two from this x squared. So my greatest common factor overall is 4x squared. All right, last example. Finding the greatest common factor of 32ab to the 8th, 48a cubed, b to the 4th, c. Let's start with our numbers, 32 and 48. Okay, I'm looking into my head and I'm not sure what the greatest common factor is. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a factor tree for each of these numbers. So here we've got our factor trees. I broke those down to save time. Let's see what we have in common. We've got a two. We've got another two, two times two. Looks like we've got a third two and a fourth two. 
Now this one has got another two here. Here we've got a three, but those don't match, so those are going to be left over. So our GCF is going to be two times two, which is four, times two is eight, times two, which is 16. So the overall GCF of 32 and 48 is 16. Moving on to our A variable. We've got an A here and an A cubed. The smallest of those, or the greatest that they're going to have in common, is just one A. Moving on to the B term, we've got B to the eighth and B to the fourth. Again, the smallest of those, or the most that they have in common, is going to be B to the fourth. Lastly, we've got this C over here, um, but I don't see a C in my first term here. So the greatest they, they have in common is nothing. My final answer is not going to have a C because there is no C in common. So our final GCF is 16A B to the fourth.